I'm Steve for This Oak With Cars, and today it's time for a Car Guys review of the brand new 2022 Ford Lightning. If you're interested in how good the speakers or how roomy the back seat in this truck is, this isn't the video for you. I don't work for a magazine, and I'm not obligated to tell you any specific information about this truck. So we're going to take a look at it, and I'm going to show you what I think is important about it. We're going to take a walk around around the truck and then I'm going to put it up on the lift. We're going to take a look at how this thing works. And I've been driving this truck for about a week so then we're going to take it out on the road and I'm going to tell you about my experience with driving it. So let's get started. Let's start with the front trunk or the frunk. There are four ways to open the trunk. The first is by using a little button that's located underneath the grill. The second is by a button located next to the steering wheel. The third is by pulling a little cable located where the hood release for the normal F-150 would be. And this one is probably the most important of all, and I'll show you why later. But the most common way of opening your frunk is probably using the key fob. The front trunk is pretty big. This is as big as a typical car's trunk would be. And there's even more storage down here. This is the platinum version with the built-in generator. And in the front trunk, we do have four regular house outlets as well as two USBs. Just a second ago, I mentioned that the cable is probably the most important way of opening the front trunk. And that's because behind this cover is the 12 volt battery. You still need a 12 volt battery on these electric cars that runs all of the electronics in the car, such as the radio, the lighting, things like that. And if that 12 volt battery goes dead, you will not be able to get into your truck using the key fob. So if we remove this panel, we can see there's the regular 12 volt battery that runs all of the electricals on the truck that require a 12 volt source. There is a battery charger that charges this battery up off of the propulsion battery when you have the truck on. But this is probably one of the most important things that you must maintain on this vehicle. One neat little touch they've done here, there's a picture of a Model T and the date 1913. That's because when Ford announced that the Lightning was in production, they called it the most significant thing in their history since the Model T. Now, just because this is an electric vehicle, that doesn't mean that there aren't things that we need to maintain just like we would on our normal vehicles. And those are located underneath this cover. Up in front here, we see some ducting that is ducting fresh air into the cabin. A little further back, we see a coolant reservoir and our brake reservoir. This is an electric vehicle, but it's not air-cooled. It still needs a coolant system in order to cool down the motors and the batteries. Because most people are probably going to be using one pedal driving and you have regenerative braking to slow you down, you will probably not be maintaining your brake system as often as you would in a normal vehicle. But here it is, and they made it pretty easy to get to. On this side, we have something that's pretty neat. If we have to jumpstart this truck in order to be able to turn it on, which will then use the propulsion batteries to recharge our main battery. Or if we want to jumpstart another car, we could just remove the panel over there and connect straight to the battery. But manufacturers don't like you doing that. And so under this panel located near the washer fluid, we have a set of jumper points right under here. Under this cover is our positive terminal, and this is our ground right here. Also under this panel is where we would service our air conditioning system. Behind this panel on the driver's side is the charging port. Unfortunately, there is a panel just like this on the passenger side as well, but it does not open and there is no charging port on the passenger side. That's a huge downside. That means that if your charger is on the wall of your garage, it will determine whether you pull forward or pull backward into your garage so that you can position this charge port next to your charger. And here we have our standard EV car charger, and it does have DC fast charging as well. When you are plugged in charging your battery, this round light right here indicates how full your battery is. And the button in the center unlocks the DC fast charger should you be using that to charge your vehicle. On the underside of this cover is another Model T and a QR code that takes you to the Ford website. 
On the back of this truck, we have a standard receiver as well as four pin and seven pin trailer connectors. This platinum level truck has four 120 volt outlets as well as one 240 volt outlet, which is capable of outputting 7.2 kilowatts of power. You can get a regular F-150 with the generator power ports in the bed, but you must have that truck running all the time to supply power and you won't have any noisy generators sitting around the work site. Before I put this truck on the lift, I want to show you one thing that this big screen is actually good for, and that's if I put the truck into reverse, we have a very nice backup camera, as well as cameras that show our surroundings. So I can easily back up to this mini without hitting anything. And you might've noticed a little blinking light over here. That is not visible by the naked eye, you can only see it when I'm filming it on my camera. And that's because Ford has hidden a camera inside here. And I'll talk about that later. Before I jump out, I want to show you one last new feature that really makes me think that Ford is targeting contractors with this truck. If I press this button right here, the gear shift hides away. And then I can open up the center console, revealing a platform where I can have my laptop, papers, or other things that I need to do for work sitting right here. Conveniently, they also put a 120 volt outlet right here so that you can plug your laptop in. Let's put this up in the air and find out how it works. Well, you should have no problem off-roading this thing. It skid plates the entire length. The first thing that we encounter here where you would usually have a pretty beefy skid plate, we just have a fiber shield, I guess you'd call this. It looks like that's the only area the whole way back that isn't protected with a steel plate. I guess time will tell if these hold up or not. On the front suspension, I think everything looks pretty standard here. It does not use big beefy aluminum control arms like the Ford Raptor does. And of course, behind these 22 inch wheels, you have a normal brake caliper and rotor. Looking back through the holes in that fiber shield, we can see there is the radiator and the electric fan. One step back from that is the shield that protects the front electric drive motor. Even looking in from the side, looks like everything is pretty well protected. The drive system on these vehicles is pretty simple. Right up there, you can see the front sway bar. And if we start moving back from there, the batteries until we get to the back. So there is no moving parts in the center section of this vehicle. Now, once we get to the back, we see some very impressive control arms. And that's because this is Ford's first F-150 with independent rear suspension, and actually the first full-size truck at all with independent rear suspension. The reason Ford had to put independent suspension on the Lightning is because the drive motor is mounted directly to the differential. With a live axle, that would mean that the motor would be moving up and down with the axle, and you don't want wires and cooling and other things like that moving around. So in this configuration, it means that the center section with the motor attached to it can stay in place while it's everything up here that's moving up and down with the road. Again, on the rear, we have a pretty standard caliper and rotor setup. And a novelty on modern vehicles, we have a full-size spare located under the truck bed. I think that's pretty much everything we can take a look at underneath the Ford Lightning. Looks like this truck is very easy to retrofit. If you want to customize with your own batteries, your own motors later, all you have to do is bolt them up to the differentials, pull the battery down out of the center, mount your other one in there. Looks pretty easy. Now let's take it out on the road and I'll show you some more features. To start the F-150 Lightning, you start it just as you would a regular truck. Just hit the start button. It will go through a boot process and then you're ready to go. One interesting quirk that I noticed, you have a normal shift lever, and when you put it into drive, it's not going to move at all until you hit the accelerator pedal. Then it starts to move. However, if you put it into reverse, the minute you let off the brake pedal, it will then start to move. Again, in drive, off the brake pedal, it's not moving. Put it back into reverse, starts to move on its own. So keep that in mind if you do buy one of these. It doesn't behave the same going forward as it does going in reverse. 
This graph right here is pretty interesting. As we take a drive, it will show us how much of our energy we've used. To start off, I'm going to make this drive as close to a normal F-150 as I can. So I'll go into the drive modes. I'll have normal selected, and I'm going to turn on propulsion sound. Now we're actually going to hear the engine rev up as we drive. We're not going to get the regen braking when we let off of the accelerator pedal. And it's going to drive pretty much like a normal F-150. Now that we are out on this road, I can better demonstrate this. You hear an engine sound accelerating. When I let off of the accelerator pedal, it doesn't slow down. It continues coasting just like a normal truck would. I'm going to get back on the accelerator pedal. You hear that sound. Let me turn it off so you can hear the difference. Now the truck is much quieter. You may be wondering why would they put that in there? Well without that sound it's very easy to go much too fast because this truck can accelerate so quickly and you're not getting all those cues that you normally would you may end up seeing yourself going way faster than you wanted to. Now I'm going to reconfigure the truck to drive like an electric car. If I engage one pedal driving, now when I give it a little bit of acceleration and I let off, the truck automatically starts slowing down and it will come to a complete stop without me even touching the brake pedal. That way I can regain all of the energy. Our brake coach just popped up, said we regained 100% of the energy that we could slowing down. We did not use our brakes and we did not scrub off any of that energy by using our actual brakes. We put it all back into the battery. We have a few other modes here. We have sport mode that allows us to accelerate much quicker. So if I give it some of the go pedal now, lifts up the front of the truck and we are just taking off. I did shoot a video when I first drove a Ford Lightning. I'll show it now. Okay, let's see what the acceleration on this is like. Whoa, that, that is crazy. You get used to the amount of torque that this truck has pretty quickly, but initially you really just can't rack your brain about something that is this big going that quickly. So if I wanna slow down for this roundabout here, I'll just let off of the accelerator pedal. We are slowing down. Once we've learned how far away we need to let off, to slow down the proper amount or come to a stop. We don't have to use the brakes unless we have a car that is slowing down too quickly in front of us, kids running across the street, some kind of other obstacle. When you have engaged sport mode, it also increases the amount of braking when you let off the accelerator pedal. So right now we'll come to a stop quicker at this roundabout than if we were in the normal mode. Now here we are off-road and you might say to yourself, why do we have an off-road mode? We have an electric motor driving the rear axle and a front motor that's always driving the front axle when it's needed. We don't have a transfer case to engage four-wheel drive. And we don't have a transfer case to, to select low gear. Well, that's a neat thing about having a drive-by wire system with a propulsion system that can vary the amount of power and torque that it's delivering. So if we go into off-road mode, you can see it has automatically activated our electronic locking differential, and it has now changed the response on the accelerator pedal. So we have more control off-road and at lower speeds. And that's real similar to what the tow haul mode does. It reconfigures the accelerator pedal, adds in a little bit more braking to keep a constant speed going down hills, basically optimizes it for pulling a trailer. If we switch back to the normal mode for a minute, we can of course activate the electronic locking differential at any time. However, it will kick itself off automatically once you have exceeded 20 miles per hour. So let's kick it back into off-road and try this out. And I should note that in off-road mode and tow haul mode, one pedal driving is not available. Off-road is one place where the camera systems on this truck really shine. Currently, we're seeing a view out the front of the truck. Let me move so that you can see that. And then a view out from the side so we can easily navigate ourselves around these trees. There are several other views we can choose from as well. This view would show our hitch if we're backing up to a trailer. 
And this one shows the bed of our truck. So if everything is sloshing around, if we're being too rough, something's coming loose, we'll see that there. I'm going to set it to this view, which gives us a good look at the ground. Now we're out on the highway. You can hear it's very quiet in here. The only thing we're really hearing is the wind noise from the truck going down the road. This truck does have adaptive cruise control. If I activate the cruise control, it even has somewhat of a self-driving feature. It will keep itself centered within the lanes. I can take my hands off the wheel. You can see the steering wheel is steering by itself right now. There is a monitoring system that makes sure that you're keeping your hands on it. I mentioned before that there's a camera hidden up here and that's watching me to make sure that I'm keeping a watch on the road. So if I cover this area up, it's actually going to yell at me for not keeping my eye onto the road. There we go. If I take my hand away, now it thinks I'm looking at the road again. Right now I'm mostly just resting my hand on the wheel and the car is actually driving along the road on its own. Every time we come up to a slight bend, it is moving the steering wheel and turning it for us. The way you should look at this is not really a self-driving feature but in addition to the lane departure warnings, where it is just helping you to stay in the lanes just a little bit, and hopefully that will prevent some crashes. I've made it back. Let's see where our power went. Looks like we drove 23.3 miles. Took us almost an hour. We were getting 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour. 82% of the power we used did go to driving, but that means 18% we lost somewhere else. Only 3% went to running the air conditioning, things like that. 7% went to the accessories. I'm not sure if that means the fan, the lights. Not sure what is all considered accessories. That seems like quite a bit of power loss due to accessories. And then forward to saying that we could have gone further, but because of the external temperature, we lost another 8%. The one thing you need to remember that with all cars, the slower you go, the more efficient you're going to be. But unlike a gasoline engine car, if you're driving through town, you can actually go much further than if you were out on a country road. The stop and go traffic does not kill your range on an electric car like it would a gasoline car. I want to give an honorable mention to a few other features. These features are also available in the standard F-150 so I didn't want to cover them completely in this video. These are available with the smart hitch feature. This allows you to put in the parameters of your trailer and it will help you make sure that your trailer is set up properly and safely for the road. This lightning also has onboard scales. It lets you measure how much payload you have in the rear. If I started to load the back of the truck up, we would see that the amount of weight that we have on the truck will start to go up. We can also put it into a different mode where it is just a scale. It will zero itself out, then we can put something in the back and it will tell us how much it weighs. This feature here called Pro Power On Board. This is a display showing how much power our inverters are using. We have the inverters for the cab, there are outlets up here in the front as well as in the back. We have our outlets under the hood and our outlets in the bed. So my final thoughts. Here in America, we love pickups. A lot of people drive around in trucks, but they're not always doing truck things. A lot of people just like the feel, the height, the security of driving a truck. So if you got one of these Ford Lightnings, you could have a truck and have a vehicle that is also very efficient on the road, especially in town. If I was someone who was using my truck for work and I wasn't going great distances, I would definitely get one of these. And if I was someone who just loved driving a truck but had a second vehicle for driving longer distances, again, I would definitely get one of these. When cars were first being put onto the roads, most of the cars were electric. The gasoline cars took over because they were better. I don't think that people will be switching to electric cars because of environmental reasons, you haven't even heard me mention anything about the environment in this video up until now.
people are going to switch to electric cars because they're better. And I can tell you that this Ford Lightning is better than any other truck that Ford makes. Sure, there's some downsides, but this is just better. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.